So we are going to continue reading Rule the School by Mike Knudsen and Steve Wilkinson. All right, remember we kind of stopped in the middle of chapter two because we ran out of time. Um, so let me go back and refresh my memory of what happens in chapter two. Oh yes, yeah. so we just found out that Raymond has found out that he is in Mrs. Gibson's class and now he has run into her and they're talking to each other. We'll probably read through chapter three as well. Yeah. Chapter three is long. Okay. I stared at her as she disappeared through the door. After a minute or two, I began to breathe again. Then slowly, my arms and legs got their strength back. What just happened? I asked Graham in a shaky voice. Well, you just screamed out loud that you have the worst teacher on earth while that teacher was standing right in front of you. In back of you, I mean. Then you bumped into her. Then you just stood there like an idiot. Then she went inside the school. Then you asked me what happened. And then, well, you know the rest, Graham said. That's what I was afraid of. I was hoping it was just a bad dream. I said, still feeling a little weak. I wonder what she's going to do to me. She seemed nice, said Graham. Didn't you see that thing she did with her mouth? I think it was supposed to be a smile. I don't think she'll do anything to you. Are you crazy? Of course she's going to do something. This is Mrs. Gibson we're talking about. I reminded him. Remember when Nick Peterson was in her class? The day after Mrs. Gibson made him stay after school in detention, he disappeared forever. I thought Nick's family moved to Chicago, Graham said, looking confused. Sure, that's what they say, but who knows what really happened? We left as fast as we could before Mrs. Gibson came back outside. I calmed down about halfway home. I'm sorry I yelled at you, Graham. I didn't mean it. I was just, you know, freaked out about the list. I wonder if she heard me. Do you think she heard me? Maybe she didn't hear me. I said, talking quickly and started to get nervous again. Or maybe she'll just forget about it by tomorrow. I mean, she's old. Old people always forget stuff, right? Yeah, maybe just maybe. I'll survive after all. Yeah, Graham answered, putting his hand on my shoulder. I'm sure it will be fine. I hoped he was right. Chapter three, the tradition continues. The next morning, Graham and I walked to school again for the official first day of the year. I was still scared about the whole bumping into Mrs. Gibson episode, but hey, maybe she'd forgotten about it. We got to school early so we could have some time to roam the halls and look over our new kingdom. And you know what? It felt pretty good. We were officially large and in charge. Graham and I turned the corner by the office and saw some puny first grade boys standing by the drinking fountain. We paused and smiled at each other like a reflection in a mirror. The moment had arrived at last. The moment we thought about since first grade. This, this is it Raymond. We've been waiting a long time for this moment. Would you like the honors? Graham asked. Be my guest, Mr. Fourth Grade Man, I said, patting him on the shoulder. Immediately, our walks turned into struts. As we passed by, Graham turned on his coolest fourth grade voice and said, Hi, boys. Their reply was just as we dreamed it would be. All these years. Sure. Graham was walking down the hall with me instead of a girl like Michelle Johnson, but the effect was still the same. The little first graders couldn't even talk. 
One of them raised his tiny hand and gave us a jittery wave, like he couldn't believe someone of our greatness could possibly be talking to him. Poor guy, Graham said. He'll be thinking of me every day from now on until the day he starts fourth grade. Today, he'll become not Gordon Armstrong, but Graham Wilkinson. It felt like we were carrying on some time-honored tradition, a tradition passed down from fourth graders to first graders every first day of school since the beginning of time. I imagined a fourth grade caveman strutting down the stone hall in a cave school, giving a small cave boy a smile and a friendly ooga as he passed by. I pictured that cave boy looking forward to the day he would become a big, hairy, stinky fourth grade caveman. That was sweet, Graham said. It's true, we officially rule the school. Hey, here come two more kids, your turn. When we got closer, I smiled cleared my throat, and gave it a shot. Hi, boys. How's it going? I said with a cool fourth grade smile, trying to raise one eyebrow a little higher than the other. Shut up, you big wiener, yelled the small, uh, smaller of the two. And then he came up to us, kicked me in the leg, and ran away laughing with his friend. Not only did my leg hurt, but for a moment, it felt like we had suddenly shrunk back to into our puny first grade selves. That wasn't supposed to happen. The whole time honor tradition was dis thing was disappearing with just that one kick. It was weird, unnatural. We just stood there in silence. Wow, I wonder what went wrong, Graham scratched his head. Maybe they were just a couple of really short third graders or something, he said trying to make me feel better. I just shook my head. I don't know, Graham. Do you think maybe I should have left it at high voice instead of adding the how's it going part? Maybe that was the problem, I said, rubbing my shin. I feel cheated. It's kind of like when you've wanted something forever and your parents keep telling you, maybe for Christmas. So you wait and wait, and when Christmas finally comes, you open your presents only to find sweaters and underwear? It's not right. Graham, it's just not right. We walked back to our classroom, dumbfounded, wondering what could have gone wrong. There were name tags on all the desks. After a quick glance around the room, I found my chair. I sat next to David Miller and Brad Shaw. Heidi Partridge sat in front of me, and Diane Dust Dustin was in back of me. I was glad Diane was behind me because if she were in front of me, I probably would never see the board. I'm one of the taller kids in my class, but Diane is the absolute tallest. She's huge, almost as tall as Mrs. Gibson, though she's not nearly as scary. David, big as a gorilla, David, big as a gorilla, Miller was the meanest kid in school. Sitting next to him didn't throw me at all, but I was happy to be in back of Heidi. I kind of liked Heidi, you know, like a girlfriend, only she didn't know it. I looked around to see who else was in our class. There was Zach, the fastest kid our age. He was wearing brand new basketball shoes, of course. Matt the Brain Lindenheimer was in front of was in the front row right in front of Mrs. Gibson's desk. He's the smartest kid in school. I didn't dare look at Mrs. Gibson for fear she would see me. I thought I would lay low for a few days just in case she hadn't forgotten about yesterday morning in front of the class list yet. The school the second bell rang. Mrs. Gibson's chair squeaked as she sat up straight in her chair. Well, let's get started, boys and girls, she said, opening her roll book and sitting down on a tall stool. When I call your name, please respond by saying, here, that is, unless you're absent. In that case, please someone respond by saying, not here. Some of the kids who were paying attention chuckled a little. Hey, I think she's trying to be funny. 
I thought to myself. Even though I hadn't heard that line a million times before when teachers thought they were being funny. I didn't think I would ever hear it from Mrs. Gibson. No one laughed louder than Lizzie McQueen. Lizzie and I have been in each other's classes before. She sucks up to every teacher she's ever had. It's enough to make you sick. She says everything in a loud, whiny voice, and her face is always crinkled up like she just smelled something stinky. Poor Graham had to sit next to Lizzie. That was funny, Mrs. Gibson, Lizzie said, still forcing out a fake laugh. Paying attention to Lizzie, Mrs. Gibson began calling out our names in alphabetical order. As she got closer to my name, I slashed out of my chair, hiding behind Heidi. Raymond Netson, she called out in her scratchy old voice. Here, I said quietly from my hiding place. I wanted to tell her that if you don't pronounce the K in my last name, but I thought it'd be best to just let it go. Mrs. Gibson paused and then called my name again. Here, I said a little louder, poking my head out a little. She took off her glasses, leaned to the side, and looked at me in my face. Are you happy to be here, Raymond? She asked. I'm glad to be here. Mrs. Gibson, Lizzie blurted out. Thank you, Lizzie, but I'm speaking to Raymond. Mrs. Gibson replied without taking her eyes off me. Yes, sir, I mean, ma'am. I mean, Mrs. Ma'am. I mean, Mrs. Gibson, I said, hoping she'd move on to the next name. But no such luck. I felt sick. Heidi turned around and gave me a weird look. She probably thought I was a moron. I'm happy to hear that, Raymond, Mrs. Gibson continued. I would hate to have anyone in our class who was not completely happy about being here. Sometimes students decide they don't like their teacher, even when they have never been in that teacher's class before. Raymond, do you think anyone in our class would think like that? She asked. No, I don't think so, I said. My forehead was getting all sweaty. I don't think so either, she said, smiling at me. By the way, Miss Stanfield? Yes, ear Sue. Is Natalie chewing gum? Um, I'm not sure, but that's okay. Since she's at home, she can chew gum. Thank you, Mrs. Gibson. I'm glad to be here too, I said. Raymond, did I pronounce your last name correctly? She asked. No, ma'am, it's pronounced Knudsen, I said. The K is silent. Nude like naked, David blurted out. Everyone in the class laughed except me. I just sweated even more. That's enough, David, Mrs. Gibson said. She adjusted her glasses and returned to her roll call. David leaned over to my desk. Why are you sweating, wimp? He growled. Afraid of an old lady? I didn't dare answer. For fear, Mrs. Gibson would start talking to me again. So I just sat there quietly. I'm talking to you, wimp, David said again, only this time he included a punch to my arm. David, why don't you move your desk up here by mine for today? That way, your long arms won't accidentally swing around and hit Raymond anymore. Mrs. Gibson said calmly. She waited for David to slide his desk to the front of the room and then continue with roll call. Maybe Mrs. Gibson isn't so bad after all, I thought. But then again, maybe that was just what she wanted me to think. Maybe her plan was to get David mad at me so he would kill me. Very sneaky, I thought, getting a student to do her dirty work. She was brilliant. All right, that is the end of chapter three.